Amen. If you would go ahead and turn your Bibles, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 6. And we're going to be titled the message today, Anchored Down. Anchored Down. We're going to begin at verse 13 and begin to read there, going down to verse 20. It says, For when God made promise, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying, Surely blessings I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is, that is for us entered, even Jesus, made a high priest forever, even after the order of of Melchizedek, forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so, anchored down. And before I begin to, to get into this, this message and this scripture is, is to, help, to help those who are, are struggling with their security in Christ. Sometimes, as Christians, sometimes we, we, we may get, or somebody may get, to, to where they begin to doubt things and so this is a, a, a thing really a security that God gives to you. Now to begin this I want to say that in ancient times when sailors would go out to sea they always took an anchor with them and the anchor what it would do it provided security for the ship because see it kept the ship from floating away and, lo and losing progress but what it also did it kept the ship from going into the rocks. They could anchor down and not go into uh, the rocks and have be shipwrecked. So to go off without an anchor, to leave without an anchor was very dangerous. And most of the time, to leave without an anchor, probably maybe all the time, but at least most of the time, it could lead to their death because they didn't have an anchor. And so to say this to you is this, is to go through this life without the anchor Jesus Christ is dangerous and can lead to the ship. It will, let me say it that way, lead to the shipwreck of your life and of your eternity. And so what Christ is doing here in this word, in the scripture, what the word of God is telling us is to give us security. It's one to, to strengthen you. So I believe that you, as you hear this and as we go through this today, it will strengthen you in your walk. Today, So what we see here is we're taught in verse 18 that there's a hope. Verse 18 tells us that, listen to verse 18, what it says. It says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay uh, upon the hope set before us. And this is a, a hope. It's not merely, it's not like the definition that we have as hope. Like, you know, we like, we're like, well, I hope this, I hope it rains. Or I, I hope that I, I, I get a promotion. I hope that my team scores a touchdown. I hope they don't fumble the ball. I, I hope this doesn't happen. This, is, this hope is a, is a deep, settled confidence based squarely and securely upon the promises and the power of God. And we're told this. We, God gives us two um, things or two great unchangeable forces here to, to secure you in that to help you with that. And first of all, in verse 13, we see there it says, for when God made promises to Abraham. So God, what he's talking here to you about is this, is that God keeps his word. God keeps his promise. You notice in verse 18, it says, it was impossible for God to lie. So God can't lie. It's impossible for him to lie. So that's the security to you that when God makes a promise to you, and when you read through the scriptures, as you read the word of God and you read those promises and all those wonderful and awesome things that God says and all the promises that God lays out there for you, 
God will keep those promises. Isn't that awesome to you? And another thing, not only is it God's promises, it's also God's oath. Listen to what it says there. In verse, beginning at verse 13, it says, For when God made promises to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessings I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirm it by an oath. He said, man, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So what exactly does that mean? He has sworn by himself what he promises will come to pass. You know, whenever you watch Perry Mason, you know who that is? Some of y'all do. You know, when you watch a court scene, you watch something, notice that they go in and they say, they say, they make you put your hand on the Bible, or they used to. And they'd say, and, and you do this, you say, um, you'd make say, so, so help me God. And so what they would be saying is this right here, that what I'm about to say is the truth. And they swore by God. And said, so God has no one else to swear by, so he has to swear by himself. On himself is what it's saying. So therefore, what God is doing, when he's making an oath, there's no one greater than him. And so God is saying, it's me. I'm going to keep this promise. So God is staking his reputation on this. So God is saying, I'm making a promise. I'm not going to lie. I'm making an oath to you that what I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. There's no greater. There's no higher. I'm going to keep my word. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what he's saying to you. And so having given all this, these things here, this assurance to give you a security, what God does now is he's going to give you a few things here to enlighten you, to help you, to give you uh, strength, and to give you security. So when you leave today, you ought to be on cloud nine. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad I came. I'm glad I heard this today. In verse 18, God tells us about the protection that he gives in Christ. Listen to it again. I'm reading these verses again. I want you to understand what's happening here. Listen to what it says. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. That word, you know, I use King James. That word consolation means comfort. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. So what it says here, it says those who have turned to Jesus have, have fled for refuge. And what God is doing is he's giving you an illustration. Back in Numbers 35 and Joshua 20. There was, a, and there was ancient cities called cities of refuge. And there were six of them. What would happen is this. If somebody accidentally killed somebody, they had these cities that they could go to. And when they went to this city, and this is accidental, death, not murder, it was accidental. So they could go to this city of refuge and they could get with the council and they would investigate it. And if they found out that this person accidentally killed them, then they could stay in one of these six cities. Now, according to Mosaic law, a family could send out one of the members, and he was called an avenger of the blood, or avenger of blood. That person could have avenged the death of their loved one. But if that person that accidentally killed them stayed in that city of refuge, they was all right. And they could, as long as they were in there, now if they stepped outside that city, they were in trouble. But as long as they were inside the city of refuge, they were all right. And they could remain in the city of refuge until the high priest died. And when the high priest died, then they, it was, everything was settled. And then they could go back to their, their home. And so what God is doing to you, for us, here for me and you, is this. He's comparing that to us. For example, we're guilty. I'm guilty, and so are you. Romans 3.23 says this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're guilty, and I'm guilty. We are guilty. Romans 6.23 says this, We have an avenger of blood. Romans 6.23 says this, For the wages of sin is death. So sin, so the avenger of blood is always after us. And what happens is this, when you got saved, what happened is, is that you fled 
to Jesus, he is your city of refuge. And when you got saved, you became in that city of Christ. Listen to what Romans 5, 9 says this. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Jesus Christ is your city of refuge. When you got saved, he became, he is your city of refuge. John 5, 24 says this. Very, very, I say unto you that he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So we are guilty. When you get saved, you flee, you have fled to Jesus. He is your salvation. He is your safety. He is your city of refuge. And he saves you. We are secure forever. Listen to Hebrews 7.25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by, by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. So here is Christ. He is our city of refuge. In Christ, you are secure. Isn't that exciting to you? I mean, I got excited. I almost had a spell when I was reading all this. And I mean, because I'm excited because I'm secure in Christ. I don't have to worry about just it falling off on me, me losing. I don't have to worry about that ever. Jesus has saved me. I'm saved. He's my city. I've been saved by the blood of Christ. If you're saved, you're saved by the blood of Christ. So here's what happens. When the person, that murderer, that accidental murderer, fled to that city of refuge, what he was doing, he was believing the promise of God. He said, I'm going in there, I'm trusting God. If I'm in this city, I'm going to be safe. And sure enough, they were. He was trusting God. He took God at his word. And what happens is, in like manner, when you flee to Christ, your city of refuge, what you're doing is you're taking God at his word. You believe in that what God says is the truth. And you're receiving that. And you're receiving his promise. Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, right? And, be, and shall believe in the heart that God has raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. When you got saved, that's what you're doing. Listen again. This is Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And in Romans 10, 13, you've probably heard this before. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when you got saved, you're doing just like that person in that, who went to that city of refuge. You go in there that they were trusting God that they were going to be safe, and that's what you did. Amen? And God is letting you know, hey, hallelujah. You are saved. You're secure in Jesus Christ. So everybody, every soul, every person that has put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ is eternally protected by Jesus Christ. Amen? Isn't that awesome to you? Don't that make you feel good this morning? Amen? I Some of y'all are all right. Now listen, so he gives you that right there, but he's not done yet. He's got more for you in verse 19. He talks about the powerful anchor. Listen to what he says. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. So, so what he's talking about right here is that God, the promise of God in regard to, is, he's talking about being the, the, the anchor. And look what it says. He's giving you two adjectives to describe the sure anchor. Listen to what it says. It can be, it's sure. Listen, this is which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. So the promises of God in, regard, in regards to your security in Christ is sure. Y'all got me? Y'all follow me right there? So it's sure. But also it's steadfast, both sure and steadfast. It means it's unmovable. So it can be relied upon. And it's unmovable. When you put them both together, it means that, that in Christ, that our anchor it will not break. Our anchor will not bend. Our anchor is unmovable. And our anchor is Jesus Christ. And so it goes on over here a little further. And I want you to notice the thing about the anchor. And now this is, I'm going to try to get you with me right here. The anchor is not placed in the places that the world places it. For, for example, it's not placed in the shifting sands of this world. It's not placed in the unstable allegiance of, of, of us, of the human heart. It's not placed in, 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 it's not secure in our ability to hold on to God or to hold on to on His promises or to hold on to Him. 
It's anchored. Listen to what it says here. The anchor is it's within that within the veil. Verse 20 tells us even Jesus. So what it's telling us this is that we are literally anchored in Jesus Christ. Nothing can cause him to cast you off. Nothing can, can cause him to slip. You are secure in Jesus. He is sure and steadfast. So when you got saved, and you gave your heart to Jesus. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, He is your anchor. It's unmovable. I mean, you are as secure as that you are in heaven right now. You are secure in Jesus Christ. And so another thing that you see about this is this, is I'm not just anchored down, I'm anchored up. I'm anchored down and I'm anchored up. What I mean by this, I'm not anchored to this world, I'm anchored to heaven. And so listen to what Philippians 3.20 says. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. For that word conversation means citizenship. So let me read it this way. For our citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're, you're anchored in heaven. So Jesus Christ is your anchor. He gives you security in your salvation. Not only that, He gives you support in your service. He's when you serve him, he gives you support. He's your asylum. Whenever you are struggling and you're attacked, he's who you run to. He's your asylum. But he's your haven when you're hurt. You ever been hurt? He's your haven. But he's also your strength in the storms. And you're going to have some storms. I'll never lie to you. You're going to have some storms. There's going to be storms of temptation that come into your life. You ever have those? Yeah, you do. I have them just like you do. And he is your strength when you deal with temptation. But not only that, he is your strength when you face times of tension. See, there's tension. There, there's tension. In our world, there's tension. There's always tension. You watch the news. There's tension. There's, there's, there's fighting. And everybody seems to hate one another. There's, there's tension. There's always a war. There's always people mad. There, there's race wars. And there's, and there's cultural wars. And, and there, there's wars of all sorts. There's tension. And Christ is your strength as you see those storms. He's your strength in the midst of those storms. That no matter what happens in the midst of those, He is your security. He is your strength. But also, you'll face those times, those, uh, those storms of trouble. We all face those things. We all face those storms of trouble. I face them and so do you. There's troubles of all kinds. Sometimes you, you lose your job. Uh, sometimes you get laid off. Uh, sometimes, um, and many times, and, and I know as you went, all of y'all, some of y'all might be more stable, but as you were growing up and as you got married and you was a young couple, sometimes there wasn't enough money to, to meet the bills at the end of the month. You had more month than you did money, you know what I'm saying? And that's what was going on. And so you needed that. So there, there was that, that trouble that come along with it. Do I have enough to do this? There's trouble, there's family troubles. You have family trouble. Sometimes families, they, they're at each other's throat. They don't like one another. And then we're going, you know, Thanksgiving's coming. And here's a lot of thought. Instead of being thankful at Thanksgiving, what happens a lot of times, we, we have this thought, oh, no, I'm going to have to hang out with some of the family that I don't like. And that's an awful thing, but that's true. There's just troubles. And what God is saying to you is this, is not only am I your security in salvation, and not only am I your support in service, but not only am I the asylum when you're attacked, and not only am I your haven when you're hurt, I am your strength when you're in the midst of the storms of life. But there's the storms of trials that come. There's all kinds of trials that we have to face. And some trials, God puts us in. And see, so what I mean by this, remember, God is the one that sent the disciples into the storm, remember? Sometimes he brings trials into our life, but he's our strength in the trial. He was their strength in the trial. And what he did is he was getting them focused on him. And sometimes God allows trials to come into our life to get us focused off of this world and off of other things, get our mind focused on him. But then there is the storm of termination. And I say, what does that mean? Our life's going to come to an end someday. And that's a storm. 
And we face death and we face it all the time in our life. And we face that and that's hard. And and the only way that I can face the, the death and termination of somebody's life is that I know that if they were Christians, I know they went to heaven. That's how, that is my strength. That is my strength. Christ is my strength. He's the strength for my storm. I mean, when I do a funeral and I know they're saved, I, I, I find, that, understand when I say this, I find joy in the fact that I know they went to heaven. I have done funerals where I don't know where they went. They, the, the family don't know where they went. I, I, it breaks my heart. They don't know that, and, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm always flabbergasted that nobody knows. Well, I don't know if they were saved or not. We don't know. I want to know. I want to know. And so that's heartbreaking, and I don't know. But I know there is strength in Christ, and when I face those things, and when you face that, He is your security. He is your support. He is your asylum. He is your haven. He is your strength in all the things that you face. So God is telling you some great stuff this morning. He's telling you, I'm your security. I, when you, in salvation, I'm your security. You're secure in me. And not only that, I'm this. I'm your anchor in this life that you live in. I'm not going to let you get shipwrecked in this life. Christ is saying, I'm your anchor. But then another thing he says, it's not, it's not done yet. Listen to what else he says in verse 20. He tells us about I'm a priest. He says, our priest and pioneer. Listen to this. It says, whether the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus is called the forerunner. And that word means a scout, somebody that goes in advance before the others come. And listen to what Jesus said when he went up to heaven. Listen to what he says. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Isn't that awesome? Okay, let me tell you what Christ is talking about right here. In the harbors in the Mediterranean Sea, some of the ships cannot get into the harbor because it's sandy. And what they would do, what they do, they call them, it's a, my understanding here, what I've read, is they got these little boats, they call them forerunners. It'll come, that forerunner will come out to the ship, get the anchor, and take the anchor into the harbor and secure it to a rock that's been embedded into the floor there, the ocean floor. And so what they'll do is that way that that ship can go right this and go right on in to the harbor. And see, that's what Jesus has done for you. Jesus has gone to the shores of heaven and he's, he's tied it off and he's got you going right straight to heaven. You say this morning, you're going right straight to heaven. He has tied it off. Or he's your, he is your forerunner. He's gone ahead of you. He's, he's got that. He's, he's tied it off in heaven. And so you're heading right that way. You're securing him. So he is your forerunner. And another thing I saw about was this right here. That he says that he's about him being the priest, the high priest, the priest. And so the thing about that is this right here. The Old Testament priest, they could only go, they'd go once a year and go in there to the Holy of Holies for the people, to represent the people. But they could only go by themselves, only them. Nobody else could go with them. What Jesus is saying to us is that what Jesus did is when Jesus went, he opened it up. For us all to go in if you're a Christian. Because listen to Hebrews 4, 14, going on into verse 16. It says, Seeing then that we have a, a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now listen to this. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our, our infirmities, but was in all points tipped and like us, or like as we are, yet without sin. So... Let me stop right there for this verse, verse 15. When you pray and you're talking to God, God understands everything that you're going through. Jesus does. Gee, there's nothing that you're going to come to him about that he is not going to understand. He's not going to say, I see what's happening in your life. I feel it. You understand what he's saying? He said, I have... I, I've, he, he says, listen, listen to it again. Listen, listen to the verse again. 
For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. He understands the things that you're going through. When you pray and talk to him, now you can come to me and talk to me and I'll, and, and I'll pray with you and stuff, but I may not can bear witness with what you're dealing with. But I can get on my knees with you and I can take you to the one that can understand everything that you're going through. But listen to verse 16. And it's talking about what I just talked to you about, the difference in the Old Testament priest in Christ. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Prayer is an awesome, wonderful thing that we don't do a whole lot of. Because when you pray, you are ushered right in through the Holy Holy, right in there, right in front of God, and you are talking right to God. I mean, you're talking to the one who created everything. I mean, you're talking to the one that can do something about the situation in your life. You're talking to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of all things. So Christ opened up the door now. There you are right there at the throne room of God because of what Jesus did. So Jesus secures you. He is your anchor. He's provided for you to go right straight to the throne room of grace and obtain mercy. But the question is this right here. This is the question, though. Are you anchored down in Christ? That's the question. It's not if you just know a little bit about him. It's not that, listen, it's not that you're a member of a church. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's not that you just give to a church. That's, that's all right. Giving's good. But that's not going to get you to heaven. Being a member of a church is not going to get you to heaven. Singing in the choir is a good thing. But that is not going to get you to heaven. And knowing about Jesus and knowing what the Bible says and knowing those things is good. But if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if, he is, if you're not anchored in Christ, then guess what? Your life is headed for shipwreck. I mean, if you don't have Christ as your anchor, let me say this, your life is going to shipwreck on the rocks of hell. And you will spend eternity in hell because Christ is not your anchor. Now, the people says, I don't like to hear that. I don't want you talking about hell. I don't want to hear that. Listen, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't say nothing about it. But the fact of it is, is, if Christ is not your anchor, if you're not anchored down in Christ, then you are trusting something else to, to anchor your life. And I'm here to tell you, it is not going to work. Are you? Now see, listen. This is for you. He's told you, listen, Christ has told you, if, you, if you're in Him, I am your security. If you were me, I am your security. I am your city of refuge. I am your anchor. I have made a way for you to go right to the throne of grace. I did all that for you. Let Christ be your anchor.